And we can demonstrate this by looking at the export of sediments in basins. So here's a very famous paper by Droxler and Schlager in 1994. And let me explain what's on that, uh, on that graph. So on the vertical axis, we have the frequency of sedimentation rates in percentage. So that's how often these sedimentation rates are found. Then on the horizontal axis, we have the sedimentation rates themselves in millimeter per thousand years. So you see it starts at zero, it goes to 250. Now on this, we have both the clastic sedimentation in the North Atlantic in the basin, that's the bottom part of the diagram, and we have the carbonate precipitation in the Bahamas, so just offshore from the Bahamas, so in the, in the deeper um, basin. So both of these diagrams basically do not show production on the platform or on the continent, but further away in the basin. So it re records the sedimentation rates. In blue, we have the glacial periods, which are characteristic for low stands. And in pink, we have the interglacials, so they represent high stand. So let's look at clastics first. In clastics, during interglacials, during high stand, we have a narrow distribution of sedimentation rates. They all kind of are very similar in the basin, and they are relatively low at, you know, at a mode close to 50 millimeter per thousand years. However, during glacials, so during low stands, we have a broad range of sedimentation rates starting from almost zero going all the way to 250 millimeter per thousand years. And the mode is closer to 100 millimeter per thousand, uh, thousand years. So the mode is double what it used to be in the interglacial. We can understand this relatively easily with clastics because during high stand interglacial, the source of the sediment is far away. Remember that clastics are point source, so everything comes from the continent. So you have typically less sedimentation in the basin, the deeper basin, because you have to transport the sediments longer, you sieve them, you only transport the, the finest particle to the basin and not that much of it. During glacial, so during low stand, you have the potential of having greater sedimentation in the basin because all of a sudden the source of the sediment becomes much closer because the shore moves closer to the basin. So that increases overall the sedimentation rates and it also spreads the sedimentation rates because where the river systems are will dictate in the basin where the main depot centers will be. So not every place in the basin will be equal anymore because the source of the sediment is closer. Okay. Now let's look at the situation for carbonates. So in carbonates, what we see is that during the glacial period, we have a narrow range of um, export rates of sedimentation in the basin. But during interglacial, we have a much broader range of sedimentation rates. So in the glacial, so during low stand, we typically have around 30 millimeter per thousand years offshore the Bahamas um, of, of carbonate export. Whereas during interglacial, the high stand, the mode is closer to 75 millimeter per thousand years, and you can have very high sedimentation rates close to 200 millimeter per thousand years. So it's exactly the reverse to the clastic systems, because that means that during glacial, when sea level is low, we have low sedimentation rates in the basin. And we can understand this because we know now that during the LST, the uh, shape, the size of the carbonate um, uh, factory is very narrow, very small. So low production means low export of sediment to the basin. Conversely, during high stand, when the top of the antecedent surface is flooded and the carbonates have caught up with base level rise, you have a large carbonate factory, which means you have more production on the Bahamas and by default, more export towards the deeper basin. So it's really a flip situation between classic and carbonates. And this was called the high stand shedding model by Droxler and Schlager. High stand shedding because carbonates shed sediments more during high stand. And in fact, this was demonstrated not just for the Bahamas. Here you can see again, a situation where you have in blue the glacials, in red or orange the interglacials, 
and you have the sedimentation rates in the basin and the slope for the Bahamas, as well as for Pedro Bank, for the Maldives, and for the Queensland Plateau. And in short, interglacial, i.e. high stand, show more sedimentation rates than glacial. So that brings me to my summary for this class. In Clastic, we use the beach tract to trace the evolution of base level and what the system is doing. In Carbonate, we do something similar, but instead we use the reef tract or the shoals. The size of the factories differ between the different system tract. Relatively narrow during low stands, almost no carbonate being deposited or very little carbonate deposition during TST. In fact, sometimes we'll see that the TST is not even present, it's not even preserved, and very large amount of production during the HST. This is the golden time for carbonates to produce. And so HST really is when most of the production happen and most of the sediments are being deposited. So that's it. And in the next class, we'll talk about what happens to isolated platform throughout base level cycles. Yeah.